Thank you very much to my brave volunteers. Really love it when people are happy to come up the front and whether they're right or they're wrong, put their answers up here so that we can all discuss and learn. So, let's go through them one at a time and see what's going on here. Okay. 60 lollies and I was a total pig. So I ate two bits of them. Who agrees with 36 as to how many left? Hands up straight. Hands up. Okay, a lot of hands, thank you. Hands down. But not all hands. Now, I think 36 is not the first answer uh, that a lot of people would have written out, or at least the first piece of working. What might be a common other answer that you could write based on this question? Yeah, Nikhil. 25? 20? 24. 24? Okay, that's right. I knew it would be. Now, 24. I'm willing to put some money down. There's a few of you who have put down 24 as your answer, okay? Now, 24 is not a crazy answer. Where does 24 come from in the question? Yeah, Rinesh. Uh, how much you weigh? How much you weigh? Very good. So, 24, let's actually, I will do the working, and maybe you can follow with me if you didn't do working, is 60 times 2 over 5, right? Or I could write it the other way around because we know multiplication, you can change the order, and it's all good, right? So, from here, what would you like me to do in terms of the working? Like, how can I make that a bit simpler? Yeah. 5 divided by 60 times 2. Fantastic. So 5 divided by 60 is 12. And the 12 times 2 gives you the 24. The 24 is an important number. It's the number of lollies that I ate. But the question is asking something else, isn't it? It's asking how many are still left, right? So this shows the importance of reading the question. What's it really asking you? And 36 is perfect. All right, let's have a look at this next one. Now, I've got an answer here up on the board. What do people think of it? Yeah? No? Different? Uh, who's got a uh, different answer? Not many. Who's got the same answer? Okay, so we've got a few sort of all the way across. Um, everyone sort of disagrees, okay? So how are we going to dissect whether this is right or wrong? I can already see part of this looks good to me. Part of this looks good. Namely, that three. Right? How can I tell so quickly, without even putting pen to board, paper, that the 3 is right? Yeah, Aiden. Because, be, because um, <coughs> the, the um, two big numbers, um, they are 1 and 2, and if you plus them together, they'll equal 3. Fantastic. Okay. So I see the 1 and the 2, and I notice the 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, that's the start, but that's actually not the finish, right? If, for instance, I change this question a little bit, suppose I changed it to 1 and 9 tenths, plus two and a quarter, the same guarantee doesn't apply. Why not? You're not going to get up with a three and something. You're going to end up with a four and something. Why? Yeah. Because, because, because the nine is like um, too big. Um, um, it makes it too big for you to do one plus two to get three. So you have to turn them into um, improper fractions. Yeah, very good. So when you have the one and two, they, they do come together to be three. But then when you put these guys together, they end up being bigger than one. Right? So therefore you've got the three that you started with, then extra bits that hang on, and so that's why this is going to be a bigger number. But have a look at the actual question we've got. Look at those fractures there. They're pretty small. Yeah, they both fit underneath one. So then how can I actually work out what the answer is from those fraction bits? Can we look at those bits together? Yeah. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. I'm just thinking about the fractions now. How am I going to combine these two fractions? Can someone give me a suggestion? Do you Okay, so I want a common denominator. We've been saying this quite a lot. What would be the smallest common denominator that you can come up with this for this pair of numbers? Yeah, give me. Uh, 20. 20, very good. Now, um, our first common response is 40. 4 times 10. But 20 is even better, isn't it? Um, the multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30. The multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Bam, I've got a common one. Okay. So what will this fraction be? If I turn it to over 20 instead of over 10, what will it become? Yes. <coughs> 6 twentieths. Perfect. 6 over 20. When I turn this one into over 20, what will it become? Mm, yeah, it does it. If, uh, no, 5 over 20. Yeah, very good. So you can see, to go from this fraction to this one, which is equivalent, I multiply the top and the bottom by 5. Yeah, you see it? Okay, so this looks perfect. Common denominators, what's that equal to? 11 over 20. Very good, 6 plus 5. And the denominators stay put. Okay. Can we simplify this fraction at all? No. It's kind of stuck, isn't it? In fact, 
And one of the reasons why you know you can't simplify it is because 11 is a special kind of number we looked at in the um, whole numbers topic. Does anyone remember? It starts with a P. Has to, yeah, mate. Prime. It's prime, right? You can't divide 11 by anything except for 11 and 1. So being that it's prime and 20 is not, you, you're sort of stuck there. Okay? So therefore, I'm going to modify this answer just a teeny bit. I'm going to change this 3 over 5 into 11 over 20, which I will point out is quite close to 3 over 5, but they're off by a little bit. Okay. Alright, are you happy with that one? How about question 3? Do we give a thumbs up to 13 over 5? Yeah. Um, I won't go through that because again, it's the same process, common denominator, just compare. Now this last one, this last one, who agrees? A sixth. Yeah, um, I see a few hands up. Yeah, okay, thank you. Hands down. Does anyone disagree? Have a different answer? Okay, that's interesting because... I have a different answer. Now let me try and explain why my answer is a little bit different. Um, I agree with the number 1 over 6, right? But let's call back to this. Do you remember when we did the topic of integers? Do you remember that? Which was numbers that can be above or below. Numbers with direction, right? So that's what we call them directed numbers. We know how to do this. Big takeaway, small, it's 3. But with integers we saw, you can do it the other way around, right? So what does this equal? Negative. Yes, it's negative 3. So therefore, over here, you see I've got the same thing, right? Small, take away big. So, Aaron, do you want to help me out? What's going to be different? Um, yeah, so all that's all it's missing, the 1 over 6 is thumbs up, but it's actually a, a negative there, right? Because it's a smaller number taking away a bigger number. So just like here, small take away big, you're going to end up with a negative. Does that make sense? 